Welcome back to week six, stream processing. In this video, we are basically going to talk about some of the concepts of stream processing. We are going to talk about global K tables, how uh, Kafka allows different joins, what kind of joins are allowed, how to think about left, right versus inner. Um, we will look at some examples about uh, how windowing works in Kafka and what kind of different windowing functions uh, Kafka provides. So let's first take a look at what is a global k-table. So if you are familiar with the concept of broadcasting, that's basically the concept which global k-table follows. But let's take a look into it. So uh, let's assume we have two nodes of your Kafka stream application running, and both of them are reading and creating a k-table internally. When this happens, the k-table is partitioned based upon the topic. So let's say the topic has two partitions. So the K table will also have two partitions. Most probably the partition will go to node one and one of the other partitions will go to node two. But in both these cases, the data we have is partial. So each node only has a partial set of data. And if you want to join this data, you then need to maybe shuffle the data across or maybe create another topic, you know, Basically, let's say you are going to you're going to say uh, select key. Uh, now you will create a new key out of it. And based upon that key, you are going to reshuffle your data every single time. Right. Uh, and, and that's that's costly because shuffling process in a distributed system is always costly. And that's what global K table tries to prevent. So how does global K table looks like? So if we have the same nodes and we kind of put a global K table instead of a K table there, the complete data is available to each node. And what happens in this case is basically whenever you are joining, you do not have to shuffle your data across. The node uh, one does not have to talk to node two or the node two data doesn't have to go to node one. Basically it's preventing shuffling, which makes the whole process way much easier and faster for Kafka stream to do. So if you are struggling with timing or there is a delay in your join operations uh, or there is a lot of shuffling which is happening, which you can see in your network, uh, then most probably a good solution to look into is uh, global key tables, which, uh, which will prevent uh, the shuffling from happening. Although it comes with some caveats, because the whole table is stored on the node itself, there might be a memory issue or size issue. So global K tables are generally of smaller size. So let's say if I want to join uh, my trip rides with a postal code, then I will put the postal code data into a global K table because there are only limited amount of postal codes for the city uh, and, and they will not keep growing forever, right? Like let's say in 10 megabytes or 20 megabytes, they will fill up uh, even less, right? So you really don't need to create shuffles in those cases and you can just say, a global K table for that particular data set and that data set will be available on each node. But do remember that uh, there is a caveat here. There is a problem. Uh, if your data size is too big, then you cannot use global K tables. Uh, and how do we build that? Uh, yeah, and no shuffle is required in this case. Uh, and how do we build that? Uh, that's very simple. Basically it's stream builder dot global table and then the topic name. This will create your global K table. Uh, and basically then you can use them in the joining join process or windowing process. Let's talk about uh, something of streaming. We already took a look into joins, but we didn't talk about different join types. This is basically from Kafka documentation and you can see what kind of properties are available. So in an inner join, you can join between K stream, K stream, K table, K table, K stream, K table, and K stream, global K table. Similarly for left join uh, and, and for outer join, you can only do K stream to K stream or K table to K table. You cannot basically mix between them. Uh, this is another way of looking at the same thing. Uh, basically, whenever you are trying to join, uh, take a look at this table and try to figure out what kind of cases are possible uh, inside Kafka stream. Uh, let's take another example just to be 100% crystal clear about how join actually happens inside Kafka stream. So let's say we have a join with 10 seconds window and we are doing an inner stream stream join. So in the first case, we will, this is the views topic and this is a click topic. So let's say a user A has viewed a page 
or a product uh, and then they have also clicked it on the second one and as you can see this is an inner join you will get an AA here if it was a left join then A would automatically come here with a null uh, and as soon as it will see a A in uh, clicks there would be an AA but we are talking about inner join so let's just keep it simple so in this case again we view product A we click a product A we get AA uh, the user has also viewed a product B, but has not clicked it any time soon, so we do not see anything. Sometimes, because of delays and all that stuff, uh, you can get on networking, you can definitely get C click before the view. But in both these cases, it's okay because it lies in our 10 second window. And in this case, you will get a CC here, which basically depicts that there was a view and a click on product C. Then again, there was a view on uh, product D, but nothing happened. Uh, a click on product E, uh, but there was no view message because maybe it got lost because the acknowledgement set by the user was maybe zero or one, and uh, there might be a data loss here. So you need to consider these cases and uh, build your producers accordingly. Uh, but in this case, we see that there was a click, but there was no view, so we do not see any data. Uh, then there was uh, product F.1 and F.2. Maybe there were multiple views of the same uh, product. So we divide them into F.1 and F.2. Uh, and then we clicked on the product F. And we can see that there is a join between F.2 and F and F.1 and F. Similarly for G, we have a view of G, but we clicked two times, let's say G.1 and G.2 of clicks. Uh, and this can happen. Maybe you clicked it twice. Maybe you went back and clicked it twice. Uh, these things can definitely happen in a click stream. Uh, and in this case, again, you will see that there is a join of G, G1 and a G, G2, basically. And you can see that this is a slight difference because G2 came later. Uh, so it was not already present. So as soon as G1 came, so G and G.1 joined. And as soon as G.2 came, G and G.2 joined. So it, there is a slight timing difference, but not that much. And in the end, we got our click for product B. Uh, and this is a special case, right? So this was delayed so much that uh, it came after our 10 seconds window. So we start at one, we saw a window of uh, one and we went till almost 11, but this came slightly after 11 or just at 11, this is not included. Uh, so we do not see a join here. And that's basically because we have a 10 second window. You can obviously do a grace period and the grace period can be another five seconds. So you can then allow another five seconds of late arriving messages. Uh, and in this case, this B would have been considered, uh, but for this example, it is not. Let's quickly uh, talk about windowing here. So we did take a look and I'm gonna share an example uh, about how windowing is done. Uh, but basically there are four types of windowing possible in Kafka. And by windowing, I basically mean, uh, we already talked about 10 seconds window, right? So there is a 10 seconds window and now I'm trying to explain different possibilities of that. Uh, so there is a tumbling window, which is basically fixed size, non overlapping and hopping, which is fixed size, but overlapping. I'm gonna show examples of this. Uh, then there is a sliding window uh, and then there is a session based window. So this is directly from uh, Kafka's uh, documentation. Uh, so if you look at the tumbling window, uh, so this is five minutes tumbling window uh, and the same color means same record key. So the key is the same and we are generally grouping by key, right? So when we say a windowed function, we say uh, group by key. Uh, and in this case, uh, this five second becomes one window and we can see that zero comes this uh, key, this key comes in this section. Uh, and then there is this blue section or the blue keys come in a different window, although you can still see that it starts at zero and ends at five. Similarly, it goes from five to 10, 10 to 15, and we can see different windows are being created per record key, uh, but they are also divided in different windows, right? So if a new Kafka stream is being joined with us in a windowed fashion, uh, only products which are in this window, which is overlapping windows of both sides, then it will join, otherwise it will not. Then there is this hopping window, which is basically, uh, so we have a five minutes hopping window with a one minute hop. Uh, again, the same color means the same record key. Uh, and we can see that it starts at zero at five, but then there is another one which starts at one and it's at six. 
then another one starts at two and at seven and so on. And we can see that this is kind of like a sliding or a hopping uh, window, right? So, and the same thing happens for uh, different keys. So in this case, we saw for green uh, and then now we will see for blue. But in streaming applications, there is also one more interesting windowing function, which is called session. So let's take a look at it. So we say a session window with a five minute inactive gap. And this is important, an inactive gap. So if there is a inactivity of five minutes, only then a new session would be started or a new windowing function would be started. And this is really cool because sometimes we want to group stuff based upon uh, sessions. So if a user is hyperactive and they are continuously on your app or on your uh, website and they are doing something with it, uh, you might want to group that as one session. Uh, and then there might be people who come and then they leave and then they come after 10 minutes, 50 minutes, maybe one hour. Uh, and they might have a different agenda this time, right? Earlier, they might want to shop for jeans, but they come after two days and now they are looking for uh, T-shirts. Uh, and in this case, you might want to have uh, or categorize these sessions as separate sessions. So let's take a look at this. So uh, this is just some new or late arriving events, but we can ignore that for, for now. Uh, but we can see that uh, all the green uh, are basically one key uh, and they are coming into one particular uh, window, right? So there is no break here. Uh, all the events were coming in the before the five minutes were ending. Uh, and in this case, this was one complete window, although it starts at zero and it's already going on till uh, position seven. Uh, but after that, we didn't see anything for five minutes. So this basically window closed at this moment. Then there was a window created for our blue key. And this window was only created at this time. It was only created at, at minute two, right? So uh, then we saw another message coming in at around five and a half, I would say, or around five minutes. And that was also included into our session because this, the gap between this is not five minutes right now. And then there was nothing for, uh, let's say it was five, then there was nothing till 10 or 11. And then some message came in at, I don't know, 11 and a half or 11 uh, beginning, but this is already more than five minutes, right? So now a new session starts basically. And this new session is, uh, is still for the same key, uh, but there would be a new window basically created for this, for this session. I hope this is clear. Uh, if not, uh, please feel free to ask questions. Um, also uh, do take a look at the actual documentation for Kafka because they have also explained and given some examples. Uh, now let's quickly take an example uh, into how can we use windowing in, in code. So let's try to do some windowing operation. I have used the same code as the count one. So I've just copy paste whatever we did in the previous video uh, when we were counting different Kafka streams. Uh, we were counting across Kafka streams uh, and I've just pasted that here. And I'm gonna now convert this into basically a windowed function. So what we are trying to do here is just very simple one. We are trying to do the tumbling one, uh, nothing fancy. So uh, after the group by key, instead of counting basically everything, I just want to count everything in particular chunks, right? Like I want to count how many messages did I got in the first five minutes or first 10 seconds, whatever, and then so on. So uh, that's basically pretty easy. So what we can do is we can say, hold on. We can say dot, dot windowed by, uh, and this then would give us many options, sliding window, window options, windows, and I can just say uh, time windows dot off size, uh, and then I can say, let's say, I think it's a duration, so duration of, duration seconds of seconds and then we need a 10 or 10 and then we need a grace so we say a grace of seconds five uh, and this will give us basically a windowed function of, of uh, a particular group so k groups too um, this gives us a windowed string option right because earlier our key was a string now it's a windowed string uh, so we need to change how we basically produce so we can also create a var window search is equal to window search dot uh, time search for window 
and that would be basically a class so dot class and uh, the window size is in milliseconds uh, and our size is basically 10 seconds so we would say 10 into 1000 uh, that will give us a window cert cert and then we can use this window cert directly here i think perfect uh, and right p location uh, i already created a topic with the window so i'm going to use that and then we can say right p location window count correct so let's try to run this uh, but before this we run the producer so start with the producer uh, right, let's see if it connects all right, it's already starting producing some messages and then we can go to the windowed one uh, and let's try to run this and yeah it's waiting for messages or it's processing messages i didn't output anything here so you don't see anything uh, but basically we can go to messages and hopefully we will see something popping in uh, and as you can see we have our data coming in uh, but if you go to the key section, this looks a bit different, right? Because it's stored in bytes, it's stored in the window search format. Uh, can we do it? No. So these basically symbols uh, specify when you read on the other side, if you use the window search, you would be able to decode this into different time frames. Uh, and basically this is what allows, uh, this is exactly how the difference between uh, a normal uh, windowed, uh, a non-windowed count function and a windowed count function would be. So this count would only be in that particular 10 seconds window and so on, right? So that's basically how you do it. And that's how the value, uh, the key is different. The value is still the same. So the value will look absolutely the same as the other one, uh, but the key is the main difference. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that's it. See you in the next video where we are going to talk a bit about uh, case equity.